Hey everybody, this video is Hey everybody, this video is about how there is no such thing as a bank loan. They're all a fraud. And anybody that's got a mortgage, this is how you challenge it. Okay? You have to understand what's going on, and if you do it in the right way, you can be successful, but you have to do it in the right way because these people are Satanists. Anyways, to have a proper foundation, this video should be watched after watching Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1, 2, 3, De Facto Courts, We're in a Martial Law Rule, Quasi-Contracts and Roman Civil Law, and Peace Officers and Law Enforcement Officers. Uh, there's a book that is called Modern Money Mechanics. It's a 40-page document published by the Chicago Federal Reserve in the 1960s. This is the cover of the book. You can actually go to Wikipedia and you can get a version of it that's missing some pages. But yes, you can get it at Wikipedia. Um, <clears throat> anyways, this is the front page of the book. As you show at the bottom where the arrow is, shows Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. Why is that surprising? A bunch of gangsters. Um, anyways... Uh, this is the second page. Uh, actually, I think this is the back page. And it says, uh, by Dorothy M. Nichols, in May 1961. The, the publication was originally written by Dorothy M. Nichols in May of 1961. Um, so, um, and it's again the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. So this is actually on page two. And... Um, we're talking about uh, modern money mechanics, um, and uh, the money, the highlighted portion says the money creation process takes place principally through transaction accounts. Oh, here it is up close. The money creation process takes place principally through transaction accounts. Um, that's on page two. Um, so how bank deposits, how they expand and how they cr contract. This is on page six and up close. If business is active, let's see. Okay. Nope. So we'll read it. I didn't know if I had it in text or something, but anyways, if business is active, the banks with S excess reserves probably have the op with, will have opportunities to loan $9,000. Of course, they do not really pay out loans from the money they receive as deposits. If they did this, no additional money would be created. What they do when they make loans is to accept promissory notes in exchange for credits to the borrower's transaction accounts. <laughs> so the borrower created the money. Think about it. <laughs> A bank is nothing more than a facilitator of credit. That's what they are. They facilitate credit. That is it. This is page six of Modern Money Mechanics. Um, of course, they do not really pay out loans from, deposits, from the money they receive as deposits. If they did this, no additional money would be created. What they do is they make loans. When they make loans is to accept promissory notes in exchange for credits to the borrower's transaction accounts. So they create a transaction account. It's just a temporary account. It's an account for that transaction. Um, this is found in Title 12 United States Code, Section 83, and uh, it says uh, no, bank, no bank shall make any loan or discount on the security of the shares of its own capital stock. When anybody makes a deposit under the uniform commercial code, the deposit becomes the bank's property. It is an unsecured debt to the bank. That's why it's called an account. It's a contract. Um, with Bitcoin, you have a wallet, and that's not a contract. That's that's because you have the code. You know where it's at. Uh, it's, it's not an account. Uh, but at a bank, it's an account. It's a contract. And uh, they have a contract to give you back your money. But um, um, so when you deposit the money into the account, then it's their money, and they just have a contract to give it back. In the case of Farmer versus Russell, 
and that's, I think, an English citation, so far as the point before us is concerned, asserts the principle that if A receives money from B to pay to C, it is money had and received for the use of the latter. In such a case, it is immaterial whether the promise to pay over be expressed or implied, for by the very act of receipt, the party holds it not for A, but in trust for C. And so, again, this is, uh, this is talking about an unconditional promise to pay is money. This is a U.S. Supreme Court case, 1831. And they're citing an, an old English court case. Um, this is another one. Hathaway versus Delaware County, I think. 1906. A cashier's check differs in that it is a bill of exchange drawn by the bank upon itself and is accepted by the act of issuance. A cashier's check is the primary obligation of the remitting bank. Um, an ordinary check is considered as merely a promise to pay, but a cashier's check is regarded substantially as money which it represents. The gift of such a check is complete, completed upon delivery of the check. Um, and then there's another case, uh, Crunk, versus State Farm Fire and Casualty. Um, and this looks like a Pacific, somewhere out west, like uh, Utah or uh, Oregon or California. Uh, that by reason of the particular character of cashier's checks and their general use in the commercial world, they were to be regarded substantially as the money which they represented. Okay, so they're cash, they're money. Um, and this is a Canadian case. Uh, Bank of Canada versus Bank of Montreal, and this is 1978. What is said to be an unconditional promise to pay a certain sum of money is itself money. The words on the face of the paper money will pay to the bearer on demand cannot alter its character as money and turn it into a different document which calls for the payment of money. Okay, so again, an unconditional promise to pay is money okay it's not it's it's not you don't have to pay anything afterwards okay when you give them that unconditional promise to pay you create the money and they're paid <laughs> that's right that's exactly what's going on here uh, Tiernan versus Jackson is over a shipment of tobacco Crunk versus State Farm Fire and Casualty is over an insurance policy. Uh, Bank of Canada versus Bank of Montreal, that's the banksters. The Tiernan case talks about it being a chosen action. So let's go see what a chosen action is. Um, this is Tiernan versus Jackson first. Uh, they are either cases where there was an express promise to hold the money subject to the order of the principal, or there was an implied promise to pay it over as it was received to the use of a particular person. In the case of Barr, no such irresistible presumptions exist. Okay, so this is all admiralty. This is all Roman law. Um, and um, yes, this is all admiralty. This is talking about presumptions. So that's admiralty, Roman law. A chose is French. Okay, so that's French civil law. That's Roman law again. French civil law and Roman law are interchangeable. Um, a thing, whether tangible or intangible, a personal article, a chattel, a chosen action is a proprietary right in personam, such as a debt owed by another person, a share in a joint stock company, or a claim for damages in tort. The right to bring an action to recover a debt, money, or thing, personal property that one person owns but another person possesses. The owner being able to regain possession through a lawsuit. Okay, so that's that's what a foreclosure is if you think about it. Um, uh, but you created that you were you paid the debt and by 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 paying it after you signed that promissory note by sending in those monthly payments. You just nullified, you created, you said that there's a debt. You, that's what you did. You said they sent you a bill, and you started making those payments. 
So you agree that there's a debt when the debt was actually paid. And this is a little game they like to play. This is Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. Civil law, Roman law, Roman civil law are convertible phrases, meaning the same system of jurisprudence, that rule of action which every particular nation or commonwealth or city has established purely for itself, more properly called municipal law, just to distinguish it from the law of nature and from international law. That's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Uh, banks do not loan anything. There is no such thing as a bank loan in America or anywhere. When you sign a promissory note, you create the money. They deposit the promissory note into a transaction account, and based on that deposit, they cut a check. Then when you start making the payments, they send you a bill. They're playing a shell game, okay? That's the worst thing you can do is start making those payments. But, um, but uh, uh, when you start making those payments... Then, uh, then that's a problem, okay? And what you need to do is, what really you should do is not make any payments. And then when they sue you, actually, when they start threatening to sue you, before they sue you, you got to file a lawsuit against them. And I'll bet you'd win then. <laughs> Tom Schaff wrote a book called Banker's Secrets, and it lists 160 questions that you can ask a CPA and an officer of a bank in court to prove that they loaned nothing. And I've done that, okay? I mean, I have I have had credit cards that were, I couldn't afford to pay them. And so what happened was that um, uh, the it, it got to the point that the, the lawyers for the bank were sending me demand letters, okay? They sent me a demand letter saying that this is, we demand full payment or we're going to sue you. And so then I sent them back a registered letter and I said, Sure, no problem. You can sue me, but I intend to prove in court that you didn't loan anything. And I'm going to ask an officer of the bank and a CPA on the stand these 160 questions that Tom Shaw put in his book. And I intend to prove that you didn't loan me anything. And oh, by the way, if you want to have an officer of the bank sign this affidavit that says that they did actually loan me a depositor's money, which is a felony, by the way then I will reconsider my position. And I served that on them by registered mail. And then 90 days later, I got a statement back on that account showing I'd been paid off. It's amazing how that works. Once a fraud, always a fraud. Things invalid from the beginning cannot be made valid by subsequent act. A thing void in the beginning does not become valid by lapse of time. These are maxims of law, okay? Time cannot render valid an act void in its origin. Uh, out of fraud, no action arises, and any act by any government official conceal a fraud becomes an act of fraud. It is a fraud to conceal a fraud, and fraud is inexcusable and unpardonable. Fraud and deceit should excuse no man. These are maxims of law. Any of fraud amounts to injustice. Fraud and justice never dwell together. Uh, what is otherwise good and just is sought by force or fraud becomes bad and unjust. The, uh, so then, if you think about it, the fictitious federal debt is a fraud, okay? There's no federal debt. There never has been. When the government creates a bond, they create the money. All mortgages are a fraud. The so-called sub so -called subprime crisis was a fraud. Sequestration by the Republicrats is a fraud. The Republicrats, uh, well, the Republicans are playing with the Democrats to drive the economy into the dirt. It's all been planned and orchestrated. It's been planned for decades. Every dollar in circulation has to be loaned into circulation. The banksters are thieves. The U.S. Congress is bought and paid for by the bankster thieves. You hear them. Speaker Pelosi says, well, we can't read this thing until we pass it. So, so they go ahead and pass it. <laughs> They're bought and paid for. <laughs> All so-called courts are bought and paid for by the bankster thieves. That's why they're kangaroo courts. They operate exclusively under the Uniform Commercial Code. This is all coming from the UN. The Federal Reserve Bank was created in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve of 1913. It took less than 20 years for them to bankrupt the country. And this is United States Congressional Record, March 17, 19, uh, 1993, um, and it says, 
It is an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Federal Emergency Banking Act, March 9, 1933, 48 Stat 1, Public Law 89-719, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent. And then it talks about H.J.R. 192, 73rd Congress in session, June 5th, 1933, joint session to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause, dissolve the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments. And is further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only, okay? It was seized by its creditors, which is the International Monetary Fund. And you notice it was March 9, 1933, and the Federal Reserve Act was passed on Christmas Eve of 1913. Okay, so think about it. That's nine months short of 20 years. That's all it took. Federal Reserve Notes are IOUs is found in the Bankster Thieves 1 and 2 video. Anything purchased with Federal Reserve notes is purchased on United States credit. If you buy something on United States credit or the credit of any other corporation, who owns it? Think about it. <laughs> United States owns it. If United States is owned and operated by the International Monetary Fund and the World Banks, then the bankster thieves own everything. That's exactly what's going on. This is the Gold Reserve Act of 1934, located at 48 Stat 337, that's statutes at large. Anyways, Section 15 says, as used in this act, the term United States means government of the United States. The term currency of the United States means currency which is legal tender in the government of the United States and includes United States notes and Federal Reserve notes. They're meant for internal use of the government only. All mortgages are found in Roman law. Negotiable instrument law is a subset of Roman law. Federal Reserve notes, Bank of Canada notes, Bank of England notes are meant for internal use of the government only. By using a negotiable instrument to purchase things, the kangaroo courts presume you consent to their martial law rule as found in the We Are Under Martial Law Rule video. Uh, and the de facto courts video. I think that we are under martial law rule video is martial law here. I think is what it's. I changed the name. Um, because you purchased everything with their private money system, technically the bankers own what you purchased. Okay, or at at a minimum, you're using their private money, so then they tax you for the use of their money. By orchestrating the subprime mortgage crisis, the banks to thieves are just taking what they already own, technically. This is all made possible because the Roman law, the United Nations, the Vatican, and your ignorance. Because you accept Federal Reserve notes, Bank of Canada notes, Bank of England notes as compensation for your labor, the kangaroo courts can presume that you're a government employee, as found in the de facto courts video. The United States has not had a treasury since 1921. That's located at 41 Stat 214, page 654. Look it up. The United States Department of the Treasury is now called the International Monetary Fund. President Documents, uh, Volume 29, Number 4, page 113, and founded also 22 U.S.C. 285 to 288. And the International Monetary Fund is a subsidiary of the World Bank. The Department of Homeland Security and all of its subsidiaries, TSA, FEMA, Customs, Immigration, etc., is a subsidiary of the United States Secret Service. The United States Secret Service is a subsidiary of the Depart Treasury Department, and the United States Secret Service used to be called the SS in Germany during the Second World War. Kind of interesting. Uh, anyways, um, security. Corum Secli it's, 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 it's Latin. Anyways, it was set up by a Jesuit. Uh, the Treasury Department, there's another video that I have that talks about it. Treasury Department is a subsidiary of the IMF. Internal Revenue Service is an agency of the International Monetary Fund, and that's found at Diversified Metal Products versus IRS. Um, 
and Senate Report uh, number 94-1148, page 5967. The United Nations, through the International Monetary Fund, issues Social Security numbers. The Department of the Treasury issues the SS-5, not the Social Security uh, administration. The new SS-5 forms do not state who or what publishes them. The early SS-5 forms state that they are Department of the Treasury forms. All Social Security checks come directly from the IMF and the UN. It says it on the front of the check. Isn't it amazing how all these terror alerts start coming out when there are funding bills before Congress for DHS? Isn't that amazing how that happens? That is just an amazing thing. Fraud is an intentional perversion of the truth for the purpose of inducing another into reliance upon it to part with some valuable thing belonging to him or to surrender a legal right. When one conveys a false impression by a disclosure of some facts and the concealment of others, such concealment is in effect a false representation that what is disclosed is the whole truth. Suppression of a material fact which a party is bound in good faith to disclose is equivalent to a false representation. Fraud and deceit may arise from silence where there is a duty to speak the truth as well as from speaking an untruth. Fraud may be committed by a failure to speak when the duty of speaking is imposed as much by speaking falsely. Where a relation of trust and confidence exists between two parties so that one places peculiar reliance and trustworthiness of another, latter is under duty to make full and truthful disclosure of all material facts and is liable for misrepresentation or concealment. Concealing a material fact when there is a duty to disclose may be actionable fraud. Ye are the father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. That's the Satanists. That's John 8 and 44. Uh, Revelations 21 and 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And um, so the point is, is that they're all going to hell, but we need to be careful and not be fearful. We need to stand up and put a stop to this stuff. Um, everything they do is a fraud and a lie. The so-called courts are full of fraud and lies. If you do not participate in their fraud and lies, they will deny you justice. The whole financial system is a fraud and a lie. The only true loans happens when it's not involving a corporation. All corporations are a fraud and a lie. There's two kinds of title, okay? And we're going to get into some how we can get to some remedies here, okay? Uh, there's two kinds of title. There's legal title and equitable title. And the reason that's important is because when you own a house, you have legal title, but there's a mortgage on it. If there's a mortgage on it, then there's an equitable interest in that property as well. And so we got to learn a little bit about equity. This is uh, Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 1856 edition. Equity in the early history of the law, the sense affixed to this word was extremely vague and uncertain. This was owing in part to the fact that the chancellors in those days were either statesmen or ecclesiastics, perhaps not very scrupulous in the exercise of power. It was then asserted that equity was bounded by no certain limits or rules and that it was alone controlled by conscience and natural justice. And... Um, so this is all uh, talking about courts of chancery, okay? Those were the courts of equity as the courts of chancery. Uh, equity, a court of equity, is one which administers justice where there are no legal rights or legal rights, but courts of law do not afford a complete remedy and where the complainant also has an equitable right. That sounds like a mortgage, okay? Because uh, a, a mortgage uh, under the law, they don't have legal title, a mortgage means nothing. Okay, so they have to go into a court of equity to get a remedy if they want to collect or foreclose on that mortgage. Equity, the system of law or body of principles originating in the English court of chancery and superseding the common and statute law, together called law in the narrow, in the narrow sense, when the two conflict in appealing to the equity of the court, she was appealing to the king's conscience. Okay, so asking the court to do the right thing, or what you view to be the right thing. Um, 
in the meantime, civil law was a form of law imposed in the Roman Empire, which was largely, if not wholly, governed by martial law rule. Equity has always been understood to follow the law, to have superior equity is to turn things on their head. This is exactly what happens when martial law is imposed. If equity is a law, then it follows its own course rather than following the common law, thereby destroying the common law and leaving what's called equity in its place. And that's uh, Judge H. Ella to the Utah Supreme Court in non-ratification of the 14th Amendment, um, and that's related to uh, Diet versus Turner. Uh, a case in Utah. So the point that he's making here is that normally equity is supposed to follow common law. But when they, under martial law, common law is destroyed and then equity can do anything at once. And that's why that clerk masquerading as a judge in the kangaroo court can sit up there and say, I can do anything I want in this courtroom because he can't. The principle, uh, and then there's the clean hands doctrine, okay? And this is important because if you have a mortgage, you need to understand this or you'll lose. Uh, the principle that a party cannot see equitable relief or assert an equitable defense if that party has violated an equitable principle, such as good faith. Such a party is described as having unclean hands. For example... Um, and they go into Section 8 of the Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction Act contains an unclean hands provision that forbids a court from exercise jurisdiction in a child custody suit in certain situations, as when one party was wrongfully removed, has removed a child from another state, has improperly retained custody of a child after visitation, or has wrongfully removed a child from the person with custody, the clean hands doctrine evolved from the discretionary nature of equitable relief in English courts of equity, such as chancery. Okay, now, so the point is that you have to have clean hands if you want to get equitable relief. Okay, and then as far as the mortgage is concerned, let's talk, well, this is latches. Okay, and latches is French law. Okay, it's civil law. Okay, French law is civil law. That's Roman law again. Think about it. Um, unreasonable delay in pursuing a right or claim. Almost always an equitable one. Okay, um, in a way that prejudices the party against whom relief is sought. Yeah, they want to get away with their theft and assault and kidnapping. It's also termed sleeping on rights. The equitable doctrine by which a court denies relief to a claimant who has unreasonably delayed in certain claim, when that delay has prejudiced the party against whom relief is sought. The doctrine of latches is an instance of the exercise of reserve power of equity to withhold relief otherwise regularly given, where in the particular case the granting of such relief would be unfair or unjust. Um, yeah, right. So these thieves want to be able to get away with their assault, kidnapping, and false imprisonment, and theft, and murder, and everything else. That's exactly what's going on. Okay? That's that's latches. That's uh, Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. Okay? So, the bottom line is, is that the only way you can hope to prevail against the banksters is to go on the attack. Okay? If you defend... After they have initiated a foreclosure, then there's the courts presume that you're in bad faith, okay? So then you don't have clean hands, okay? You're in bad faith. If you haven't made any payments, if you went and got that mortgage and you haven't made payments and you understand the law that it was paid, and then they start uh, proceeding a threatening foreclosure and you file a lawsuit, well, then you'll have the clean hands and they'll be the thieves, okay? <laughs> or... If you've been making payments for 25 years, and and now maybe you can't afford it, or for whatever reason you decide not to make payments, and now they're threatening to foreclose, and and then you file a lawsuit, and you bring up the issue of the fraud, and the fact that it was paid for from the beginning, and the fact that they didn't loan anything, and all the rest of that stuff, then you'll still have the clean ends, and they'll be the thieves, Okay. You gotta understand how equity works. Okay, you have to have clean hands if you want to get relief from equity. Now these people are satanists, and guaranteed, if there's a mortgage involved, there's equity there. Okay, and you will lose if you do not have clean hands or can't justify it somehow. Moreover.
However, in the case of original mortgages and promissory notes, they are not merely exhibits but instruments which must be surrendered prior to the issuance of a judgment. The judgment takes place of the promissory note. Surrendering the note is essential so that it cannot thereafter be negotiated. So, if they're suing you for foreclosure and they don't produce the note, then they can't they can't the judgment the court can't give a judgment anyways okay? and this is actually a case uh southern district um uh a district court of appeal for the state of florida the fourth district okay so this is uh johnston versus and johnson versus hudlett and uh so the point is is that is that this is another way that you can approach it okay they have to produce that promissory note the original not a copy Okay, it has to be the original, not a certified copy. The original. So, in summary, so there's there's a couple ways that you can approach it. Okay, so you, you got to understand it's a court of equity. Okay, there's no other court that's going to deal with that. Okay, uh, because it's the bankster thieves, and so you got to understand it's a court of equity. And so that judge is going to be wearing his equity hat. And so you have to have clean hands. And uh, and and so and then if they're going to uh, get foreclosure, you need to demand that they produce the original. Okay. And again, the argument is there is that is that is that they're wanting to steal your house. You admit nor deny anything. Uh, they're the ones that want to steal your house. They need to prove their case. And by by when they prove their case, they got to produce that note. Where's the note? I want to see this note. And and you just say, I admit nor deny anything. They got to prove their case. Where's this note? That's where you got to go with it. I'm serious. <laughs> Anyways. I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around the banks will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. And that's Jefferson. If all bank loans were paid, no one would have a bank deposit that would not be a dollar of currency or coin in circulation. This is a staggering thought. We are completely dependent on the commercial banks. Someone has to borrow every dollar we have into circulation, cash or credit. If the banks create ample synthetic money, we are prosperous. If not, we starve. What do you think is going on nowadays, people? Uh, uh, the banksters are, are, are forcing this. They've been, they've been planning it and orchestrating it for decades. We are absolutely without a permanent monetary system. When one gets a complete grasp of the picture, the tragic absurdity of our hopeless position is almost incredible. But there it is. It, the banking problem, is the most important subject intelligent persons can investigate and reflect upon. It is so important that our present civilization may collapse. It's what's happening right now. Unless it is widely understood and the defects remedied very soon. And that's Robert H. Hemp, Robert H. Hemphill, Credit Manager, Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta for eight years. The American Revolution was primarily fought over King George III's Currency Act. The refusal of King George III to allow the colonies to operate on honest money system, which freed the ordinary man from the clutches of the money manipulators, was probably the prime cause of the revolution. There are two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by the sword, the other is by debt. The money powers prey upon the nation in times of peace and conspire against it in times of adversity. It is more despotic than monarchy, more insolent than autocracy, and more selfish than bureaucracy. It denounces as public enemies all who question its methods or throw light upon its crimes. As a result of the war, corporations have been enthroned and an era of corruption in high places will follow, and the money powers of the country will endeavor to prolong its reign by working upon the prejudices of the people until all wealth is aggregated in a few hands and the republic is destroyed. All bank loans are a fraud. There are no bank loans. There is no federal debt. All foreclosures by banks are a fraud. 
The U.S. Congress is bought and paid for, owned and operated by the banksters. The banksters have their bought and paid for Obama and their bought and paid for U.S. Congress are in the process of setting up a blood sacrifice to their satanic gods called World War III, and they will get the American Satanists to help them. And if you have any doubt about that, watch Mark uh, Passio's, go see Mark Passio's YouTube channel, What on Earth is Happening, because he says that two-thirds of Americans are practicing Satanists. So we're going to reap the whirlwind. We're going to get Judgment Day. Judgment Day is coming. Not very far away either. It's started. It's already started. It's only just begun. When injustice becomes law, then resistance becomes duty. Is there any wonder why Christ threw the bankster thieves out of his day out of the temple? Christ even called them thieves. So what can we do? Well, we can refuse to participate in their system. We can use any other money system than Federal Reserve Banks, Federal Reserve Notes, or Bank of Canada Notes. We can use qualified endorsements in all checks and negotiable instruments. The one I use is for deposit for credit on account or in exchange for non-redeemable Federal Reserve Notes at face value. I've seen people put on it, redeem for lawful money, 12 U.S.C., Section 411, too. Um, either way, you're basically making a statement that I don't agree with the uh, current regime. Bitcoin mining halved. Okay, this is another thing about Bitcoin. Okay, Bitcoin is an alternative form of money. Okay, and Bitcoining mining. Okay, they have people that mine Bitcoin. What happened is there was a um, a, 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 a certain amount of Bitcoin that's created. Um, I think it's ultimately it'll be 21 million bitcoins will be created, and that'll be it. It'll all ever be created. But the thing about Bitcoin is, is that's infinitely divisible. It's not like a dollar where you, the smallest you can get a penny. Uh, uh, Bitcoin is infinitely divisible. Um, so uh, what happened was the mining halved in, on the 18th of July of 2016. Um, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. If you use Bitcoin on Amazon.com, you can save 15% with uh, www.purse.io. You open a Bitcoin wallet at Coinbase and buy $100 worth of Bitcoin. They'll give you $10 worth of free, uh, free Bitcoin at, at, this, uh, at this link right here. There's Bitcoin debit cards available. There's portable Bitcoin wallets are available, um, uh, even hardware wallets. And uh, there's Bitcoin ATMs uh, spreading all over. Uh, this is actually a chart. This I got this from a free uh, email uh, from Casey Research. And this shows, shows uh, what Bitcoin did last time it halved. And if you look at uh, 2000, November of 2013 is when it halved. Uh, six months before, it was at $5.20. When it halved, it, it was at $12.50. Um, six months after it halved, it was at $127. So that's up 1,000% almost. And then a year after, it was up at $1,072, which was up 8,000%. So um, uh, right now on, on October, or I should say, uh, July the 18th, it just happened, it halved again. And so there's a lot of people that are thinking that this is this kind of thing is going to happen. If anybody wants to send me an email, I'll forward you the email that Casey Research sent me, and you can read it and decide for yourself. But uh, the bottom line is, is that is that uh, Bitcoin's an alternative form of currency, and they cannot regulate it. There's no control. It's all encrypted, um, and it's a way of doing things um, um, without without their thumb on you. Um, now, of course, the banksters are getting on the Bitcoin bandwagon too because they see what's going on. But that doesn't mean that uh, that doesn't mean anything. It's not surprising they would. They don't control it though. Uh, matter of fact, nobody controls it. This is purse.com or purse.io's website, and this is where they talk about saving uh, fifteen percent off with off with when you buy stuff at Amazon with Bitcoin. And um, and this is Coin ATM Radar, which is you know a website that I just did a search for Bitcoin ATMs in Fort Worth, and it says here there's 15 Bitcoin ATMs in the Fort Worth area, and you can see them all the different dots. The dots represent different things, um, you know, with the, like the fees that they charge. They all charge some fees. They all have little 
things that they do or don't do. And so you have to look at them and, you know, decide which one's best for you. But the bottom line is, is that, is that they're all over the place. Um, they're not as common as other ATMs, but they are around. Okay. You can use them and people do use them. And, um, so the bottom line is, is that, uh, you know, with these bankster thieves, you might feel like that little mouse, uh, but you can still, you have to be brave. Okay. And, and, Give them the finger, and and refuse to participate, and and uh, and uh, you know uh, quit participating in their satanic system. Um, and um, but if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Okay, and so. I consider myself that I was born into this world. I kind of have a gift for understanding this stuff. And so I, I was born into this world to testify of the abominations of this generation. And so I don't want to be held accountable. And so uh, it's my sincere hope that uh, everybody that watches this video is not held accountable and that they do their part to notify people and make them aware of what's happening. And we can all work together to put a stop to this stuff. Um, either you're part of the par problem or you're part of the solution. You are now a watchman. Circulate this video far and wide. Um, other videos is Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3, Churchianity Series, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 and 2, Unidroit, Martial Laws Here, Quasi-Contracts in Roman Civil Law, De Facto Courts, All Courts are Ecclesiastical Courts, D.C. Courts in Texas, and Jurisdiction. And um, I recommend you watch these other videos so that you can get an idea on what's going on and how it's happening. Copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. I have YouTube videos that are videos of private information shares. They show these and other court citations that are available for a donation. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I uh, prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept I'll use Federal Reserve notes, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. Um... The, uh, this last paragraph is for all the revenue officers out there because I don't want anybody to think that I may willingly accept the benefit of using their IOUs uh, to, to buy and uh, to do things with. Uh, I would prefer gold or silver coin. I only accept them as a less desirable alternative. If you find this useful, then you need to pay it forward. If you don't pay it, know what pay it forward means, then watch the movie. There's a movie called Pay It Forward. Rent it. My blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email is engineerwin at yahoo. I have a YouTube profile. You're probably watching it on that profile, but you, I've got uh, over 200 videos I've uploaded. Uh, Facebook community page called Sovereignty International. I have a private group at Facebook called Sovereignty International. And then my Yahoo group that I talked about and my Google group. Both of them are called Administering Your Public Servants. The Yahoo group has um, a lot of uh, files. The uh, Google group has the big files. And the Yahoo group that has a files directory and a links directory. The links directory has links to the big files at the Google group. And... Um, so uh, the links, I, all my uh, Google files, I do not make them available unless you have a link. Okay, if you have a link, you can get it. Otherwise, and so if you want it, uh, send me, ask me for the link. I'll send you a link. But, uh, but I do not, otherwise they're private. They're not allowed for uh, available for anybody and, um, and that kind of thing. Anyways, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. I hope you got something out of it. Please circulate it around. We need to... Um, uh, uh, put an end to all the Satanism that's going on here and um, and uh, get back to uh, a good government. And I hope uh, I appreciate you watching it and I hope you have a real nice day.